FinTech services in India have been facilitated by our digital public infrastructure, including Aadhaar, PM Jandan Yojana, VDO, KYC, India Stack, and UPI. To enable more FinTech innovative services, the scope of documents available in DigiLocker for individuals will be expanded. An entity DigiLocker will be set up for the use by MSMEs, large businesses, and also charitable trusts. This will be towards storing and sharing documents online <coughs> securely whenever needed with various authorities, regulators, banks, and other business entities. 5G services. 100 labs for developing applications using 5G services will be set up in engineering institutions. To realize a new range of opportunities, business models, and employment potential. The labs will cover, among others, applications such as smart classrooms, precision farming, intelligent transport systems, and healthcare applications. Lab-grown diamonds. Lab-grown diamonds is a technology and innovation-driven emerging sector with high employment potential. These environment-friendly diamonds, which have optically and chemically the same properties as natural diamonds, to encourage indigenous production of LGD, lab-grown diamond seeds and machines, and to reduce import dependency, a research and development grant will be provided to one of the IITs for five years. <laughs> to reduce the cost of production, a proposal to review the custom duty on LGD seeds will be indicated in part B of the speech. I come to the fifth priority, Honorable Speaker, sir, green growth. Honorable Prime Minister has given a vision for life or lifestyle for environment to spur a movement of environmentally conscious lifestyle. India is moving forward firmly for the Panchamrit, the net zero carbon emission by 2070 to usher in green industrial and economic transition. This budget builds on our focus on green growth. The recently launched National Green Hydrogen Mission, with an outlay of 19,700 crores, will facilitate transition of the economy to low carbon intensity, reduce independence on fossil fuel imports, and make the country assume technology and market leadership in this sunrise sector. Our target is to reach an annual production of 5 MMT by 2030. Energy transition. This budget provides for 35,000 crores for priority capital investment towards energy transition and net zero objectives and energy security by Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas. To steer the economy, to steer the economy on sustainable development path, battery energy storage systems with cap capacity of 4,000 MWH will be supported with viability gap funding. A detailed framework for pumped storage projects will also be formulated. Renewable energy evacuation. The interstate transmission system for evacuation and grid integration of 13 gigawatt renewable energy from Ladakh will be constructed with investment of 20,700 crores, including central support of 8,300 crores. Green credit program. For encouraging behavioral change, a green credit program will be notified under the Environment Protection Act. 
This will incentivize environmentally sustainable and responsive actions by companies, individuals and local bodies and help mobilize additional resources for such activities. PM Program for Restoration, Awareness, Nourishment and Amelioration of Mother Earth, PM Pranam, will be launched to incentivize states and union territories to promote alternative fertilizers and balanced use of chemical fertilizers. Go Bardhan scheme, 500 new waste to wealth plants under Gobardhan, galvanizing organic bio agro resources done. Go Bardhan scheme will be established for promoting circular economy. These will include 200 compressed biogas plants, including 75 plants in urban areas and 300 community or cluster based plants at low at a total investment of 10,000 crores. I will refer to this in part B also. In due course, a 5% CBG mandate will be introduced for all organizations marketing natural and biogas. For collection of biomass and distribution of biomanure, appropriate fiscal support will also be provided. Bharatiya Prakritik Kheti Bio Input Resource Centers. Over the next three years, we will facilitate one crore farmers to adopt natural farming. For this, Honorable Speaker, 10,000 Bio Input Resource Centers will be set up, creating a national level distributed micro fertilizer and pesticide manufacturing network. <coughs> Mishti. Mishti. <laughs> building on building on India's success in afforestation. Mangrove initiative for shoreline habitats and tangible incomes. Mishti will be taken up for mangrove plantation along the coastline and on salt pan lands wherever feasible through convergence between Manrega, Kampa Fund and other sources. Amrit Darohar, wetlands are vital ecosystems which sustain biological diversity. In his latest monkey bath, the Prime Minister said, now, I quote, now the total number of Ramsar sites <coughs> in our country has increased to, to 75, whereas before 2014, there were only 26, unquote. Local communities, <laughs> local communities have always been at the forefront of conservation efforts. The government will promote their unique conservation values through Amrit Darohar, a scheme that will be implemented over the next three years to encourage optimal use of wetlands and enhance biodiversity, carbon stock, ecotourism opportunities and income generation for local communities. Coastal shipping. Coastal shipping will be promoted as the energy efficient and lower cost mode of transport both for passengers and freight through PPP mode with viability gap funding. Vehicle replacement. Vehicle replacement is an important continuing policy, replacing the old political, uh, sorry. I know. Replacing. Absolutely. Thank you. Replacing old polluting vehicles. old polluting vehicles is an important part of greening our economy. In furtherance of the vehicle scrapping policy mentioned in Budget 21-22,
I have allocated adequate funds to scrap old vehicles of the central government. States will also be supported in replacing old vehicles and old state ambulances. Honorable Speaker, sir, I move to priority six, youth power. To empower our youth and help the Amrit PD realize their dreams, we have formulated the national education policy, which is very wide in its scope, but one of the things is also to focus on skilling, adopted economic policies that facilitate job creation at scale and have supported business opportunities. Pradhan Mantri Kaushal Vikas Yojana. Pradhan Mantri Kaushal Vikas Yojana 4.0 will be launched to skill lakhs of youth within the next three years. On job training, industry partnership, and alignment of courses with needs of industry will be emphasized. The scheme will also cover new age courses for industry 4.0, like coding, AI, robotics, mechatronics, IoT, 3D printing, drones, and other soft skills. To skill youth for international opportunities, 30 Skill India International Centers will be set up across different states. The digital ecosystem for skilling will be further expanded with the launch of a unified Skill India digital platform for enabling demand-based formal skilling, linking with employers including MSMEs, and facilitating access to entrepreneurship schemes. To provide stipend support to 47 lakh youths in three years, direct benefit transfer under a pan-India national apprenticeship promotion scheme will be rolled out. Tourism. Honorable Speaker, sir, with an integrated and innovative approach, at least 50 destinations will be selected through challenge mode. In addition, in addition to aspects such as physical connectivity, virtual connectivity, tourist guides, high standards for food streets, and tourist security, all the relevant aspects would be made available on an app to enhance tourist experience. Every destination would be developed as a complete package. The focus of development of tourism would be on domestic as well as foreign tourists. No, Sector-specific skilling and entrepreneurship development will be dovetailed to achieve the objectives of Deko Apna Desh initiative. This was launched as an appeal by the Honorable Prime Minister to the middle class to prefer domestic tourism over international tourism. The integrated development of theme-based tourist circuits, the Swadesh Dar Darshan scheme, was also launched. Under the vibrant villages program, tourism infrastructure and amenities will be facilitated in border villages. <coughs> Unity Mall. States will be encouraged to set up a Unity Mall in their state capital or most prominent tourism center or the financial capital for promotion and sale of their one district, one product and GI products and other handicraft products and for providing space for such products of all other states as well. Sir, priority number seven, financial sector. Our reforms in the financial sector and innovative use of technology have led to financial inclusion at scale, better and faster service delivery, ease of access to credit and participation in financial markets. This budget proposes to further these measures. Credit guarantee for MSMEs. Last year, I proposed revamping of the credit guarantee scheme for the MSMEs. 
I am happy to announce that the revamped scheme will take effect from 1st April 2023 through infusion of 9,000 crores in the corpus. This will enable additional collateral free guaranteed credit of 2 lakh crores of rupees. Further, the cost of credit will be reduced by about 1%. A national financial information registry will be set up to serve as the central repository of financial and ancillary information. This will facilitate efficient flow of credit, promote financial inclusion, and foster financial stability. A new legislative framework will govern this credit public infrastructure and will be designed in consultation with the RBI. To meet the needs of Amritkal, and to facilitate optimum regulation in the financial sector, public consultation as necessary and feasible will be brought to the process of regulation making and issuing subsidiary directions. To simplify, to ease, and to reduce cost of compliance, financial sector regulators will be requested to carry out a comprehensive review of existing regulations. For this, they will consider suggestions from public and regulated entities. Time limits to decide the application under various regulations will also be laid down. Honorable Speaker, sir, to enhance business activities in GIFT IFSC, the following measures will be taken. Delegating powers under the SCZ Act to the IFSCA to avoid dual regulation. Setting up a single window IT system for registration and approval of IFSCA, SCZ authorities, GSTN, RBI, SEBI, and IRDAI. Permitting acquisition, permitting acquisition financing by IFSC banking units of foreign banks, establishing a subsidiary of Exim Bank for trade refinancing, amending IFSCA Act for statutory provisions for arbitration, ancillary services, and avoiding dual regulation under the SCZ Act, and recognizing offshore derivative instruments as valid contracts. Honorable Speaker, sir. Data Embassy, for countries looking for digital continuity solutions, we will facil facilitate setting up of their data embassies in GIFT IFSC. <laughs> Improving governance and investor protection in banking sector. To improve bank governance, and enhance investors' protection, certain amendments to the Banking Regulation Act, the Bank Banking Companies Act, and the Reserve Bank of India Act are being proposed. Capacity building in securities market. Honorable Sp Speaker, sir, to build capacity of functionaries and professionals in the securities market, SEBI will be empowered to develop, regulate, maintain and enforce norms and standards for education in the National Institute of Securities Markets and to recognize award of degrees, diplomas and certificates. A central data processing, a central processing center, a central processing center will be set up for faster response to companies through centralized handling of various forms filed with field officers under the Companies Act. <coughs> Reclaiming of shares and dividends. For investors to reclaim unclaimed shares and unpaid dividends from the Investor Education and Protection Fund Authority with ease, from the Investor Education and Protection Fund Authority with ease, an integrated IT portal will be established. Digital payments continue to find wide acceptance. In 2022, 
they show an increase of 76% in transaction and 91% in value. Fiscal support for this digital public infrastructure will continue in 2023-2024. Azadi ka amrit mahot 